Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one. Come now and give me peace in this moment, in this video, in my office here, in my beautiful, lovely home, in the amazing state of the Carolinas. You can guess which one. Welcome to Grace Ministries USA. I want to thank you for stopping by here at Grace Ministries USA. We do a lot. We do a lot. We do everything short of sin to help people to feel better in their decisions that they're making. We, we put a devotional up five times a week to do that specifically to help us to think Clearly, when we're making all these 70,000 decisions a day, we want to feel confident in those decisions that we're making. We want to know how to handle the situation that we're going to be getting into without hesitation, without doubt. We're not, we're not walking around in fear. We're not living in condemnation, guilt, or shame. We're understanding the world and the gospel through the lens it was meant to be, which is through God's mighty ways. And it's in the Bible. And when we open the Bible and we look to God and not culture, not man, not politicians, because those will disappoint you. The news Watch the news, you will be disappointed. Your family members might have a different political view or opinion. You might be disappointed by that. It's best to just stay away from that and get in the Bible, open God's word, learn and study from him, the creator of the earth. Today's devotional. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Luke 18, 17, we have to have childlike faith to believe in God, something that we can't see. As we celebrate Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. It's great to remember the examples mothers provide and the sacrifices they make for us. Our mothers have taught us so many wonderful things over the years. Our mothers, for instance, have taught us about such things as anticipation when they said, just wait until your father hears about this, right? Waiting for your dad to come home and spank that butt, right? They taught us about stamina when they said, you will sit there. You will sit there until you finished all your vegetables, right? Teaching us about stamina and discipline and respect, right? They taught us about the value of prayer when they said, you better pray that that stain comes out. <laughs> all these things, all these lessons, all these valuable, critical life lessons that we must be learning and teaching, right? When we look at the gospel, when we look in the Bible, when we look at Matthew's gospel specifically, we find an account of parents bringing their children to Jesus. And that is really what we are supposed to do as Christians' parents. We are supposed to bring our kids to God. That's our job. Our objective is to bring our kids to Christ, right? Friends, family members, if you're a Christian, your job is to tell everybody about Jesus, what he's doing in your life, and how he can affect theirs and what they can do to invite him in. However, we don't do this by providing a bad example, right? No, far too often kids come home, they, they, the kids come from homes in which, and mom was like this, which Jesus is named but not followed, right? Like, like this hypocrisy is what drove me away from the Lord. Oh, do this, do that, da, da, da. And then they turn around and then they do the opposite, right? We bring our kids to Jesus, friends, family members, by being genuine, true Christians and setting a good example for them. And when we mess up, and we will, we certainly, most certainly will, we need to admit it right away, say we're sorry, and move on and accept the apology and let them 
be forgiven. Another way we bring our children to Jesus is by praying with them, reading the Bible to them, and, and going to church with them, taking them to church. Do you have a friend or a family member or kid or somebody who needs Jesus? Take them to church. Take them to church. Matthew tells us that when the children were brought to Jesus, the disciples inexplicably thought it was a bad idea. They did. They're like, man, we can't be teaching this stuff to kids. In fact, they started to rebuke the parents for doing that, right? Come on, it's crazy, but we got to teach our children. We got to. Mark's gospel says that when Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. Uh, that's in um, uh, Matthew 10, 14. Clearly, clearly they had missed the memo on what Jesus was trying to communicate. Only a few days earlier, he had interrupted their argument about who would be the greatest in the kingdom, right? Who's it going to be? The one with the most money, the one with this, the one with that. No, none of that. Jesus had a little child in that moment stand up. And then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, 3, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve sin and God at the same time. Yet here on this day, as the children approached Jesus, his disciples were trying to send them away. This made Jesus angry. And this is the one dude you do not want to make mad. <laughs> he can disappear you real fast. He told them, let the children come to me. Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. Matthew 19, 14. We should have that same kind of faith, y'all. According to Luke's account, Jesus also said this. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never, never enter it. Luke 18, 17. I threw another never in there. That's not in the Bible. It only says it once. We'll never enter it. Luke 18, 17. Go check it out and read the previous verse and the one after that. <laughs> That's a fascinating statement because conventional wisdom would say that a child should become like an adult to know God, right? But according to Jesus, an adult must become like a child, this is powerful. That doesn't mean we need to be childish. It just means we need to have faith and believe, right? You can't see electricity, yet we believe in that. You can't see Wi-Fi, but yet we're on our phone all day, every day, these networks that we're connected to. You can't see that. But it does mean that we need to be more childlike. We need to be more childlike for sure. Children come to their parents in a state of helplessness, right? We go to God because we need help. They're aware that they can't do a lot of things for themselves in the same way. We should come to God and in, in acknowledgement of our complete, complete helplessness and dependence on him. God, the father, creator of the universe. That is my prayer. Let us pray as we go about our week. Father God, as we go about our week, I pray that you, Lord, that you help us to have that childlike faith, that you continue to work in my life and anybody who's watching and listening's life in the way that you have been, which is in the details. God, you are in the details down to having birds land on my hood, a dove. I've seen more doves in the past year and more red birds and blue birds Jesus, I know it's you specifically 
as I'm driving, birds flying in front of me, landing on my hood, just little things that I know that it's you there. I pray that you do that for anybody watching and listening, God, so that they know that you're real, that you show them what you've shown me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Because we have work to do, work we had better be doing. We got to tell people about Jesus. Get out there. Get after it. Let people know he's real. He's risen. He wants you to live for him. He wants you to do the next right thing. Stop sinning. Stop chasing that evil nonsense and turn away and repent and give your life to him and do good and do the next right thing by living in absolute integrity. And if you're not sure what to do, don't do nothing. Stop and pray about it and listen to that intuition, that little small, still voice inside because it will not steer you wrong. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a great rest of your week. Please give us a thumbs up, a subscribe. If we said something that encouraged you and moved you towards God in any way, that lit a fire, that sparked something inside you, that moved you in a direction, please give us a thumbs up, a subscribe. We're trying to reach people in the name of Jesus Christ. The name above all names, y'all. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for listening. God bless you and have a great rest of your week. God is good all the time, baby. It's not just a saying. It's true. Look at your life. Look at what he's doing. Look at what he is doing. Are you walking? Are you talking? Are you breathing? Look at what he's doing around you in your life. Pay attention. Be grateful. Make a list of three things you're grateful for each day. Be happy, be positive, be optimistic because it beats the alternative and it's a choice. We get to choose. We have the freedom to choose. So choose good. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.